so firstly, good friends, on behalf of all of us here around Laurel Lodge and the parish and the whole community here especially, we want to welcome you here this morning and offer our sympathies to all of you on the death of John, better known as Johnny. We call him Johnny in respect for him today, as he's called. And above all, sympathies to his wife, Brida, to John, Gary, Fran, Maria, and Adrian, grand grandchildren, etc., and also the sons-in-laws, brothers-in-laws, and daughters-in-law, and all the whole family as a caring community today. Now, before I go, now, before, well, before I go any further, make sure I get it right, we are linking up now with France. Okay? And this is a note here from uh, Frances herself and her husband, Luke, over there. She says, Dear Dad, we really miss you and forever treasure the happy memories we, and laughs we had together. Thank you for the wise advice throughout my life. I am very proud of a dad like you and will always treasure the happy times. I love you. Rest in peace, dear dad. Francis uh, and our son, our, his son-in-law, Luke, in France there today. So hello, France. Bonjour. Hope you're well over there today. And we're very much, and we'll be joining you again in Vassenevin about 20 past 11, please, God. Now, before we, the member, member symbols of Johnny's life, who's doing that at all today, it's, um, the, yeah, Jamie and Rachel, where are you? Marsha the Holly. Now, there, Johnny was a distinguished and outstanding skilled craftsman. And wood was his medium, wood. And he worked at wood all his life. Worked in the artists as well as everything else. Woodwork, great stuff. Lovely. That's there. And the plane. Well used. Thanks very much. Good man yourself. Now don't forget that when you're going home today. Uh, so that's, that's important. There are the symbols of his life. Like St. Joseph. He was a carpenter too, a great man, and today we salute Johnny as well today. And um, as I said already, he worked at the OPW there, a skilled, a skilled craftsman, a carpenter. So we gathered this morning, my friends, as a family of God, small as we are this morning, but still in all we're here, in heart and soul and mind, gathering in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good friends, we can see that here today, we're gathered around Johnny today, we're resurrection people. If you have a look over there at that candle, that Easter candle, Christ is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Johnny would have known that well as a scholar and as a craftsman, the Alpha and the Omega. So we ask God's pardon and peace in today for the ups and downs of life where we could have done things better maybe, as we say, Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray then today for Johnny and for the whole family of today. May Allah strengthen us all and help us in our journey of life. God, you have called your son Johnny from this life. Father of mercy, fulfill his faith and hope in you. Lead him safely home to heaven, to be happy with you forever. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, our first read from the prophet Isaiah, Adrian Marshall Hale, who the girl. And then the second reading will be um, Gary later on after, the, after this psalm. Um. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will prepare for all peoples a banquet of rich food. On this mountain, he will remove the mourning veil covering all peoples and the shroud enwrapping all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord will wipe away the tears from every cheek. He will take away his people's shame everywhere on earth. For the Lord has said so. That day it will be said, See, this is our God in whom we hoped for salvation. The Lord is the one in whom we hoped. We will exult and we rejoice that he has saved us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. Death came through one man, and in the same way the resurrection of the dead has come through one man. Just as all die in Adam, so all will be brought to life in Christ, but all of them in the proper order. Christ as the first fruits and then after the coming of Christ, those who belong to him, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still and trust in me. There are many rooms in my Father's house. If they are not, I shall have told you. I am going to prepare a place for you, and after I have gone and prepared a place for you, I shall return and take with me, so that where I am you may be too. Know the place that I am going. Thomas said, Lord, we don't know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And this is the gospel of the Lord. Just a thought for today, but let me just ponder for a moment. The way, the truth, and the life. Good friends, the symbols we have there, the woodwork manual there, and the claim, lovely symbols of a caring person there, uh, Johnny, in his own time there, as a skilled craftsman. And skilled he was and precious in the eyes of so many people, especially his family. Good friends, take for example his family and all that. He was he's a credible witness. In any court case, good friends, no matter how, how, how high profile it is, there are huge big court cases at times there, unless there's at least one credible witness, the whole thing falls apart. In fact, there it goes. Two qualities are needed, good friends, for a good witness for the court cases, and that is courage and truthfulness. Courage and truthfulness. And Johnny certainly lived those qualities in his life. You will, Christ himself says, you will be my witnesses in word and in deed. And he lived them to the full. That's why the martyrs of old, good friends, and, the, and those who gave their life with prayer and service, that live as Christians, good friends, in our world today, we're challenged, us, we're challenged today to live as Christians, especially in a world where that, which is indifferent 
skeptical and hostile indeed to the values of Christ. Everything, everyone will find to acknowledge Christ before people even say, I will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. There's no great honour, good friends, than that, than being a total, shall I say, a witness to Christ. And Johnny, like the St. Joseph, his patron, if you like, the carpenter, a walking man. He walked with his hands. And then the, the gifts he was given. Uh, and he was obviously com compassionate and caring, a man of faith, of love, of Christ, etc. A religious man in his own way, he saw the work of his hands as part and parcel of the continuation of the work of Christ God in the world today. And we pray to you, he had happy that himself. St. Joseph was the patron saint of happy deaths. So let's pray to you, especially for those who are seriously ill at the moment. And we think today, of others as well around the place who are not well at the moment, and families and friends. So now, good friends, today we ask God to help us today to learn from Johnny as a person of courage and of truthfulness. Hopefully we'll be credible witnesses of the gospel of Christ in our, by the way we work, the way we talk, the way we walk, if you like, in our world today. And I said it's difficult because we're living in a fairly um, hostile community, really, by and large. Anyway, more about that later on. Now let's move on now to our prayers and for today. And we invite the family members to come up to the prayers of faith, please, today. And we ask Sarah, Emma, Jamie, and Rachel, isn't it? Marsha and Holly. You're very good. Lord God, we remember all those who have gone before us, especially Grandad's brothers, Danny and Freddie, and most recently, Grandad's cousin, Tommy Corrigan, who died. We pray for all those who mourn today that they will receive strength to assist them in their sadness and grief. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for Fran and Luke who could not be here today. We especially remember Luke's mother, Madame Ellie Farreau, who sadly passed away last week. May she rest in peace. Quel repose en paix. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who are sick in hospital. We give thanks for the skills of doctors, nurses, and carers. May they continue to reflect the compassion and healing of God, who is made to known, who is made known to us in Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who are suffering, who are lonely and afraid at this very difficult time. We pray for patience and perseverance and strength as we get through this pandemic. We look forward to brighter days when we can all meet together again. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Thanks very much. Locally here, we have a young lady whose anniversary is around today, second anniversary, Colin Farrell, from the local school here in uh, Skull Marsh here, and we're simply going to again for today for his family and colleagues from the school there today. Colin and all, Johnny and all those are friends and relatives who rest, rest in, may their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed to the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. And now we want to the offertory of our Mass today.
Sisters and brothers, pray then that our Mass here this morning may be pleasing to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands, praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all your church. Lord, receive the gifts we offer for the salvation of Johnny, whom Christ may Christ be merciful in judging our brother, for he believed in Christ as his Lord and Saviour. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well and ever give you thanks to Jesus Christ our Lord. In him who rose from the dead, our hope of resurrection dawned. The sadness of death is with the bright promise of immortality. Lord, for your faithful people, life is changed, not ended. When our body lies in death, we gain an everlasting dwelling place in heaven. And so with all the choirs of heaven, we proclaim your glory as we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. It is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Yes, Lord, you are holy, you are kind to us and to all. And for this we thank you, thank you all for your son, Jesus Christ, who would not before he died for us, he took bread and gave you thanks, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take this all of you and eat it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the chalice. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, gave the chalice to his disciples and said, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory. And let us proclaim in the great mystery of our faith in the Celtic way, my Lord and my God, Muirna Agus Muir. In memory of his death and resurrection, we offer your Father this life given by the saving chalice. We thank you for counting us worthy to be in your presence and serve you. May all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world. Make us grow in love with Francis, our Pope, Dermot, our Bishop, and all the people of God. Remember Johnny, whom you call from this life, in baptism into heavy Christ, and may now share the life of the resurrection. Have mercy on us all with Mary, the Mother of God, with Francis and Claire, and, all, and Thomas the Apostle, and all the saints, who have done your will throughout the ages. We praise you in union with them all as we pray, through him, with him, in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. And so today, wherever you are today, throughout Ireland, throughout France, throughout here at home, we pray the prayer of all Christians. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin, and protect us from all useless worry and anxiety, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. In the power and the glory. We pray that in solidarity today, Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. And we say that the peace of the Lord be with you always. To your family today, the Murphy family today, at home and abroad, and to all our community who sympathize today with the Murphy family and the loss of their loved one. Peace of Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. This then is that Lamb of God, the source of our hope and our healing. Happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy 
Isa and my root, only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all then to everlasting life. Amen. Focal note here, we'll be able to I want to thank really on behalf of the family today. The strong, calm man is always loved and revered. He is like a shade-giving tree in a thirsty land or a sheltering rock in a storm. Who does not love a tranquil heart, a sweet-tempered, balanced life? It does not matter whether it rains or shines or what changes come to those possessing these blessings for they are always sweet, serene, and calm. That exquisite poise of character, which we call serenity, is the last lesson of culture, the fruitage of the soul. It is precious as wisdom, more to be desired than gold, yea, than even fine gold. How insignificant mere money seeking looks in comparison with a serene life, a life that dwells in the ocean of truth, beneath the waves, beyond the reach of tempests, in the eternal calm. Good morning to all those who join us online, including those who are joining us from France. We would like to thank you all, our extended family and dear friends, for part participating in the online Mass. We acknowledge how difficult it must be for you all, and especially, of course, for Fran and Luke, who are unable to travel from France because of the restrictions, and also for Andrew, who is cocooning at home because of the pandemic. Dad's family, Chrissy, 
Dermot, Geraldine, Margaret, Brendan, Helen, Joan, Pauline and their families should also be here today. It is very sad that you are not able to be with us and share in our grief as a family at this time. We understand how difficult that must be and we hope to see you all when possible. Firstly, I would like to thank Father Dan Joe for a wonderful Mass today and that allowed us to celebrate our dad's life. We would also like to thank the community of Laurel Lodge in Castlenock. We'd especially like to give thanks to Dr. Aidan Ward of Castlenock Avenue for caring for Dad over the many years and whom Dad always held in great esteem. We would also like to thank Moira O'Neill, our local pharmacist at the ODC Pharmacy in Laurel Lodge, who also looked after his medication. We cannot forget his wonderful neighbours in Castlenock Elms, with special thanks to Dolores and McDesey and so many others in the locality. We would also like to thank Lorraine and Derek Flynn on Castlenock Laurels, my own neighbours who provided the blessed ashes only a few days ago before Dad's passing. We'd also like to thank uh, Barbara Galvin Sheridan and Frank McNamara for the beautiful music played here today. And finally, Cunningham's Funeral Home, who have been more than helpful uh, in this arrangement today. The passage I read just now is from a book that dates back 100 years ago. And the book is called, As a Man Thinketh, In His Heart, So Is He. That proverb embraced Dad's being because he was exactly what he thought, his character being the complete sum of all his thoughts. His kind thoughts led to his kind actions. His curious mind led him to be creative with his hands. His straightforward thinking led to his easy to please, uncomplicated and simple ways. He was, to sum up, a very decent and genuine man, and we were very proud to call him our dad. He was a man of few words, and he was a thinking man. If any one of us went to him with a problem, he would listen intently, say nothing, take out his tobacco, light up his pipe, and ask, would you like a cup of tea? Sometimes that was all that was required, an ear for listening, and that was something he did very well. When he gave advice, it was always very sound advice. But I could not describe Dad properly without talking about our dearest mother, Breda. She was the love of his life, and he was the love of her life. They were like two peas in a pod. They knew what each other thought, and they were so intertwined, they functioned best when they were together. In his later years, Dad preferred to stay local, so if Mam was out with us, she, would always, she was always in a rush to get back. She would say, I have to get home, Johnny will be waiting for me. And he was always at home, and always waiting for her to come home. He was always making sure she was okay. They were yin and yang. They just got each other. They met at the Kingsway Ballroom off Parnell Square in the 1950s. Mam was 19 years old when she met Dad, and they married two years later. They married in 1959 and were married for 61 years. They reared five children, John, Gary, Fran, me and Adrian, and we were central to both their worlds. Everything they did was in our best interests. They could not do enough for us. Dad expressed his deep love for Mam through his actions. He was her eyes and ears. He watched out for her. He made sure she took her tablets. He made her endless cups of tea. He always wanted to make sure she was okay. If he noticed any change in her health, he would report it dutifully to ensure it was checked out thoroughly. He was her rock. Mam was equally loving of Dad. She made sure he had his dinner served at the same time every evening, and only she could butter his bread the way he liked it. She was only at ease when he was okay and he was only at ease when she was okay. Dad was a fantastic father to us all. He was a father in the traditional sense. He was the provider. He worked all the hours God gave him to provide for his family. He worked as a carpenter with the OPW his entire working life. But that is not all he did. That was the day job. He would also take on extra work in the evenings where possible. He had a very strong work ethic. 
He produced some of his finest works when he worked in the evenings and whilst working for some of the most well-established furniture making companies and antiques dealers in the city. Between them both, they went over and above what was required of them as parents. They devoted their lives to us and we can never repay them enough for that dedication and devotion. He was often described as a skilled craftsman than a carpenter. He did not just cut the wood into shapes to create a piece of furniture. He carved, paired, shaved, and painstakingly sculpted the wood to create his masterpiece. He spent time planning, analyzing, drawing, measuring out his plans on paper before bringing his project to life. He had the physical strength behind him to lift, haul, and shape the wood into his creation and for the most part, he used a manual saw, hammer and nails, with a pencil behind his ear, and worked away to his heart's content. He paid the same attention to his pipe. He loved his pipe. He spent hours on end mixing tobacco or paring a plug of tobacco, just like the block of wood, shaving it down, mixing, installing it patiently into the chamber before lighting it and finally puffing it on it. The pipe was never out of sight. If he was running low on tobacco, he would give me a call and say, if you happen to be passing the shops, could you pick me up an ounce of tobacco? No rush. That was a sign that stocks were critically low. If we went on holidays, he would say, if you think of it, could you pick me up some tobacco? Because he liked to experience different tastes, different aromas outside of his traditional special Virginia brand. That and the fact that it was much cheaper to buy the tobacco abroad. So any tobacco from Spain, France or Italy was most appreciated. He was a man of his generation, a man who worked hard and took his responsibilities very seriously. He was also a compassionate man. He often said of people down on their luck, there but for the grace of God go I. So even though he was not religious in the traditional sense, he carried all of the Christian values we all aspire to. We learned a lot about dad from his family, his sister Chrissy says as a single man he loved jazz. He would hijack the record player on Sundays and play Ella Fitzgerald, Chris Barber and all the big bands of the 1950s. There were plenty of memories shared of jobs they shared together, but no matter what the pressures, Dad's approach was always keep calm, not to panic and everything will be fine. Keep your hair on, he'd say. Everyone loved Johnny. But the greatest role of his entire life was that of granddad. Even us, his children, called him granddad, as that is the role where he blossomed. First when Andrew was born, then Sarah, then Emma, Jamie, and finally Rachel. Each one of his five grandchildren brought him so much joy and happiness that it was pure pleasure for us all to watch. As he was retired, he had all the time in the world to invest in his grandchildren. He made them solid wood swings, a seesaw, a life-sized doll's house with its own built-in cooker, shelves, table and chairs for them to sit into. Both himself and Mam took on the role of minding them, babysitting them, collecting them from school, picking them up at creche, and generally spoiling them rotten. He transitioned from the traditional role of dad to the hands-on modern granddad, pushing their prams, hugging them, kissing them, and just constantly making them laugh. That's what he loved most, to make them laugh. He would be the first person there to collect them when they were in play school and then on to primary school. He was always reliable, always punctual, always dependable. So finally, Dad, from us all, John, Gary, Fran, me and Adrian, we stand here before you today. And thank you from the bottom of our hearts for all you did for us all. Your honesty and integrity, your wisdom, your compassion, your strength of character, your sense of humor, your decency, your goodness, your wit, all combined to make you so unique that we know there will never be another like you again. You live on through us and your values pass from generation to generation, so you will never be forgotten. Rest in peace, Dad, and know that we are the ones that were blessed to have you in our lives. Thank you. We'll go. We'll go. We'll go. We'll go. And the hardest job you ever have to do. Now we pray to the Ecclesiastes. Stay with us, Lord Jesus. The Lord supports all the day long.
while she is lent and the evening comes, and the busy world is hushed and the fever of life is over and our work is done, then your mercy give us a safe lodging, holy rest and peace at last. Amen. We do have our final prayers now for commendation today. We stand for them now, please. <clears throat> Before we go our separate ways, let's take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him, he will ease our sadness, strengthen our hope, and one day we shall drive to greet him again. For the love of Christ which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Now we sprinkle his remains with holy water, and then since it is well to remind us, we are temples of the Holy Spirit from baptism all our life. Receive his soul and present it to God the Most High. Receive his soul and present it to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to his aid, hasten to meet him, angel of the Lord. Receive his soul and present him to God. May Christ who called you take himself, be an angel to the bosom of Abraham. Receive his soul and present it to God the Most High. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, that the perpetual light shine upon him. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Johnny in the sure and certain hope that you have all who died in Christ, you will rise again on the last day. Merciful Lord, turn towards us, listen to our prayers, open the gates of paradise for your servant, help us who remain to comfort one another the assurance of our faith till we all meet in Christ and are one with Christ forever. Johnny, may the angel lead you to paradise, may the marks come to welcome you. Take the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. May you have eternal rest. Amen.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, for the three days you lay in the tomb, we may hold the graves of all who believe in you. Give our brother a peaceful rest until the day when the resurrection and the life. This is Almighty God called our brother Johnny from this life. We made his body to the earth. And we pray then today. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me, even though he dies, he will live. Who believes in me, he will never die. Lord, you wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort the people in their sorrow today. Lord, hear us. Our brother Johnny was washed in baptism, anointed with the oil of salvation. Give him fellowship for all the saints. Lord, hear us. He nourished, was nourished by the body and blood of your son at the table of the Lord. Lord, hear us. Comfort us in our sorrow that is our brother Johnny. And we pray the prayer of all Christians. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord God, you always listen to the prayers of the faithful. We have celebrated the funeral rite of your brother Johnny. Now ask, grant him share and blessed reward. And for the bereaved today, Lord Jesus Christ, God of all consolation, who removed the tears of the grave of Lazarus, took now a compassion on your servants, or so to give to their loss. Strengthen their hearts, the spirit of faith, to accept them as cross the loving hands, give them trouble deep to their troubled hearts, and hearts of all, the light of hope. May the prayers of Mary, the mother of God, who stood by the cross as her son was dying, help those who mourn for Johnny today. May she comfort them with her own faith. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal rest granted him, O Lord, that petrol light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. And may his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed to the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.